Hello, my name is Paul Harper and I'm from Cardiff University. This is the first of four short videos introducing some key concepts for queuing systems in healthcare. In this first part we're going to look at Markov chains. Many healthcare processes can be considered as stochastic processes. Take for example this simple natural history model of HIV and AIDS where we have captured the different stages of the disease as a set of clinically defined states. An individual patient makes transitions between these states as their health deteriorates with the disease over time. At each increment of time, which could be say a month or a year, an asymptomatic patient for instance may with a certain probability remain asymptomatic, or they could move to the symptomatic state, or they could move to AIDS, or even die from other causes. The same concepts also apply when considering patient flows through healthcare systems, such as a hospital. Again, we have a simplified diagram here capturing different places or states a patient may be in hospital. I've deliberately used the same structure as of HIV AIDS to illustrate the point that of course any number of states and flows between them could be used. The principles are that individual patients move between these states through time and that a patient can occupy only one state at one time. We can treat time in our model as discrete or continuous. Initially, we will look at discrete time Markov chains. When we have the Markov property here, that future states are independent of the past history, and that a transition to the next state depends only on the current state. And for ease of notation, we write the probability of going from state i to state j at time n as pijn. This then leads on to the transition probability matrix of one step ahead probabilities. The first entry, for example, is the probability of being in state 0 and still being in state 0 at the next time point, whereas this is a probability of moving from state 0 to state 1, and so on. Clearly the rows must sum to 1 for all possible transitions of i over the state space. So back to our HIV example, from data sources, expert opinion or published literature we could populate the transition matrix. So for instance, if we had time steps of one year, after that year an asymptomatic patient has a 90% chance of still being asymptomatic, a 7% chance of being symptomatic, 2% chance of having AIDS and a 1% chance of dying during that year. Likewise, someone starting that year with AIDS has an 85% chance of still having AIDS after the year and a 15% chance of dying during that year. The usefulness of studying healthcare systems in this way is that we would like to understand how the system will behave after a number of time steps. So if I am currently asymptomatic, after 10 years, say, what state might I be? Or I might specifically want to know what is the probability of being in each state after a certain time. Well, we can describe this with a vector pi n in which each entry gives us the respective probability of being in each of our states. Back to our example. Initially, all patients with HIV in our model must enter this disease in state 1, which is asymptomatic. So what is the probability distribution of being in each state after one time step, or equivalently one year here? Well, this is fairly trivial, since it is just our one-step transition probabilities themselves by definition. But more generally, after n time steps, this can be computed as the initial vector at time zero, multiplied by our one-step-ahead transition probability matrix raised to the power n. I've put together some Sage mathematical software system code to demonstrate this which allows you to change the initial distribution and the time step n and to look at the corresponding values of the probabilities of being in each state after n time increments. Just briefly, we can also treat time in a continuous fashion and this leads instead to a transition rate matrix denoted by Q, an example of which is shown here with a different four state model and flows between them. And without wishing to go into the specifics, one can derive expressions for the transient distribution and thus obtain steady state probabilities if they exist by solving pi q equals zero. 
Here is how that system with four states evolves over time, given initially everyone started in state 1. You can see that as time progresses, the system falls into some steady state, and you can work out the probabilities of finding yourself in each of the four states that of course sum to 1. Finally then, why is this all useful for healthcare? Well, as I said, most healthcare processes can be thought of stochastic processes given variability and heterogeneity amongst patients, with patients moving through a set of defined states over time. This may be clinical staging such as cancer or movements through a physical system such as clinics in a hospital. One can then model whole cohorts of populations over time, looking at the distribution amongst the states that the population of the cohort will be in after a certain amount of time ahead. We can also add in costs to capture resource needs over time and model interventions. Say, for example, a new drug was found or discovered that allowed patients to stay longer in the AIDS state. Then we simply change the modif or modify the transition probability matrix to reflect this scenario and rerun the models. Or that a cue was found for AIDS that allowed us to modify entirely the state space diagram and have arrows moving back through the states to a new state of cured. Well, in the next video, we will look at concepts of queuing theory and pick up again a notion of continuous time Markov chains.